Hello, good morning. Uh, a very warm welcome to all of you on our live studio, um, live from the new um, Centre National de la Musique, National Center for Music, that the... Sorry, I have a little technical problem. Sorry again. Um, so I'm Françoise Claire, I'm uh, head of classical and jazz music at uh, the new uh, Centre National de la Musique, National Center for Music, where the Bureau Expo uh, has merged uh, in just a few weeks ago. We are very happy to welcome a fantastic uh, panel of uh, speakers this morning to talk about the Benelux market, and it will be moderated, as usual, by our friend Eric Denus. Thank you, Eric, for being with us uh, with so much loyalty. This, uh, I'm very happy to let you know that this series is going to continue. Uh, we are still in a time which is difficult, and we need uh, some support from our digital medias. So, after December, we are happy to propose some new thematic subjects. Uh, stay connected with our social medias to be informed uh, of what is going to come very soon. So now uh, I give the mic to Eric. Uh, thank you to all of you for listening and uh, have a very good day. Merci beaucoup, Françoise. Welcome to all of you. Uh, we have a very international panel today coming from three different countries. Thanks very much to our participants. I will introduce them in a very short time. Thanks very much to our listeners. Um, um, we are very proud of having you today morning, despite probably a very tight schedule plan for all of you. So, um, ladies first, let me please introduce Annika Janssen. Annika is a general manager of the new music ensemble Asko Schoenberg, based in Amsterdam, Holland. Um, warm welcome, Anneke. Um, on her uh, left, Hendrik Storm. Uh, Hendrik is the new general manager of the single world famous concert hall and recital place venue in Antwerp in Flanders, Belgium. Hi, Hendrik. Um, Günther Brücke is the general manager of the uh, Symphony Orchestra Brussels Philharmonic in Brussels. I don't need to introduce it. Capital of, of Europe and also of Belgium. Thanks very much, Günther, for being with us. Stefan Gemara is the head of general manager of Philharmonie Luxembourg, uh, which also implies the Orchestra Philharmonique de Luxembourg and many other fantastic uh, ensembles and artists and orchestras in residency. Thanks so much, Stefan, for being with us. We have uh, Jérôme Cherce. Jérôme is the new head of music at Boza, also in Brussels, in the capital of Belgium and Europe. Thanks so much, Jérôme. I think it's one of your first interviews, maybe. Um, you, 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 you let us know. Yes. I, anyway, we are very proud of having you. Very proud. Renaud Loranger. Renaud Loranger is there um, on, uh, as, as the artistic director of Pentaton uh, in, in the Netherlands. Uh, Renaud is also uh, the arts director of Festival de la Nodière in, in Canada. So we are all the more proud also having him today. Thanks so much, Renaud. So, as you know, um, we are close to the end of the year and um, probably it won't be the final say on this uh, quite extraordinary and surprising year we would just have had, but maybe we can just try in a few minutes, each of us, to, to do a kind of, of, um, of uh, not a, a conclusion, but some, I, I don't know, some um, wise words about what has happened. I would say first in your country, let us very shortly introduce how it is going now with um, total or partial lockdowns, curfews and all of this, because we get a little bit lost. And also what has happened in your institution, um, also regarding your staff, your um, uh, management issues in these last eight 
nine months since March. May I maybe start with Anneke again? Uh, so please give us a, an update about what is happening on the Amstel River. Wow. Um, well, Eric, first of all, thank you for, uh, for this invitation. Um, what, what has happened is uh, a lot. <laughs> it's mostly a lot. Uh, and I think one of the, uh, the things that, that, um, that is most striking is the way it changes all the time. So we just came out of a, another uh, sort of lockdown where the venues were closed again. And now we're in a situation again where there are 30 people allowed in uh, the venues. So yesterday we had a concert. Uh, but up until the moment that it happens, you don't know if it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and uh, um, yeah, what, what's going on. Um, and I think what I hear from other ensembles as well, um, what is most hard on staff and on musicians, and I think generally for a lot of people, is that all your routines are gone. So you rely on a lot of routines when you are working here and that makes us also like flexible um, to to have certain ways that things are done so you can adjust to it and be creative around it but now all those routines are basically parked uh, you couldn't rely on um, on your knowledge that you build up for all these years because it changes so much and that, i think that took a big toll on uh, producers for example um, uh, one of uh, our producers says, "Like it's like your um, a concert is no longer a concert. It's like you're you're producing a mini opera every time um, because it's so um, yeah, so so tough, um, but also very very challenging and interesting. I find it really interesting. Um, I think it was Winston Churchill said, never waste a good crisis.' Um, interesting how people are changing and how some." Uh, some things that were already on the brink of change sort of got into a faster mode. And uh, uh, um, yeah, so I think that's my two cents for now. Hendrik, <laughs> thanks so much, Annika. Well, good morning. Thank you, first of all, for uh, uh, inviting me to this webinar. I think it's, it's pretty uh, similar to, to, uh, to what Anneke has uh, said already. But in addition to that, uh, I think what is very difficult nowadays is the lack of perspective. Um, for example, here in, in Belgium, in Flanders, we are in a lockdown uh, officially until uh, mid-December. But who knows how long uh, this lockdown will take? Um, we don't know. We simply don't know. So, um, and meanwhile, we have to uh, launch our uh, programs for January, February. Uh, we have to make contracts with artists. Uh, we have to renegotiate a lot of things. We have to reschedule a lot of things, but we don't know what will be possible. Um, so that makes it very, very difficult, I have to say. Um, but on the other hand, it um, it's a test. It's a test for our flexibility. And I think we are doing great. We are all doing great. But of course, there are also some limits. Eh? Um, and the longer it takes, the more difficult it becomes. Um, so yeah, that's basically the situation here in Antwerp. OK, thank you. You didn't say a word, neither, Anneke, on uh, the support you, you feel from, uh, from, from your public or private funders. So you don't seem to have uh, issues on, on this. Or, or may I misinterpret this silence? Oh no, no. Um, uh, um, it's it's. Uh, I I feel a lot of support uh, from okay. uh, local government, but also, most importantly, from our audience. There's okay. people that are are going to say come uh, approach us and say like, I want to support the musicians because I know they're struggling and can I give some money? So that, that that's really interesting. I think the audience is great. They, they are but, amazing. And Rick, is that the case too in Andrew? And Flanders? Yes, of course, we get a lot of support from the from the government. We can't okay. complain at all, I have to say. Um, uh, and we also receive a lot of um, supportive messages from our audience. Um, and for that, we are very thankful and grateful. But still, I mean, it's um, it's 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 a, it's a hard time. That's the only thing we can say. And uh, I think the first trend in classical music business in the Benelux is surviving for the moment. 
uh, but that's for later then. I understand. Thanks. Thank you. Günther, um, first a feedback from a symphony orchestra. Yeah, well, uh, as, as my colleagues say, thank you for, for having us here and thank you for the initiative, which I think is great. Um, Annika just quoted uh, our good friend Winston Churchill. It was also Winston Churchill who said, uh, success is not final and failure is, is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. counts. Uh, now, I think in this crisis, um, which is not over yet, uh, we I have learned that our processes are far too robust and um, that basically um, one of the lessons I learned is that during this period up till today, and it will last for a while, is that was what was secondary uh, in the past becomes priority. What was priority becomes secondary. Um, I mean, my own management style, for instance, is, is very, very horizontal. People do um, act within, you know, within the guidelines that we have developed within the company, but, but, but very freely. Throughout the crisis and from day one, we have turned that around in a very, very directional and vertical organization, because in a crisis, you need unity of command, I think. Um, so there are a lot of things which, I mean, the whole world seems to be turned upside down. It's like you are used to wear a coat for many, many, many years, your, your, the coat you love. And all of a sudden, it turns out that you can turn it upside down and you can wear it also. So, so we are in a very strange situation. And I think that we are close with the orchestra. I mean, we have stopped working during the first um, general lockdown in Belgium, which was between uh, mid of March and, uh, and end of June. Um, in this second period, we have kept working. First, we were allowed to have a small audience, like like a bit, a bit of the Dutch situation and everywhere. Now again, there is no audiences anymore in the halls, but we keep we keep continuing. We are we are on our schedule now. We stream everything, which is also kind of a strange situation, but still. But it's a, it's a it's a period in which we will question on relatively short notice everything that we have been doing in terms of. Well, what are the positive lessons learned? So it's not all negative. Although I fully agree with all colleagues that uh, surviving and 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 um, it's very difficult. Normally we would plan two years in advance. Now we are playing uh, planning two days in advance, which is which is of course um, yeah disruptive. And you do follow your colleagues on the general support by um, city council government. Fair very much, very much. We have been uh, supported very much by government. I mean, also for governments, it's it's a completely new situation, but we can't say in Flanders uh, that we are left in the cold. And from an audience point of view, I have, I, I'm in this, uh, I'm in this uh, pos uh, um, position since 17 years. I have never, never received warmer and more thankful reactions from our audiences than today. Okay. So better not play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Stefan, um, I, I, I don't dare to ask the government support in the Grand Duché because I, I hope they do. <laughs> but please, um, let, us, let us know. What is, what is your feedback? Please. Well, shall we stay, start with the government support? It's not unlike in, in our neighboring countries. They are not considering, let's put it that way. I mean, we are well funded or have been well funded throughout the history of the institution. Uh, so they are, it's not for us really the moment to ask for additional money in a way. Um, nevertheless, as you also have, we got very good reactions for from our audience. We get many donate, you know, many also private or individuals of our philophil cycle. They really donate money, which we then exclusively give to artists in a way. We don't use it for the structure, but we use it to be able to pay. Uh, especially to all the artists we have in the educational field, the individuals mainly, those who don't get public support elsewhere um, to pay them to pay them fees. Um, otherwise, the situation, I mean, we are we are kind of Luxembourg is a little uh, village galois uh, because we are still open in a way. Yeah. We still play concerts. Um, we will play tonight. Our orchestra is, is playing tonight, an, in fact, an opera gala with, um, with Madame Crebassa, with Saimir Pirgo, etc. With an audience, uh, well, they will play twice with an audience of 100 
and of course uh, recording and streaming um so we are kind of very how can i say it's a i mean it's a desperate situation on the other hand i was sitting yesterday in general rehearsal and thought what a privilege to still be able to to play in a way um but uh i it looks like we'll also be closing next week or let's put it that way not be allowed anymore to to have an audience from next week on but still allowed to to make the orchestra rehearse and record which means we will prepare like some recordings which we will then will try to sell to renault later like a apollon visaget is on the schedule for next week and stuff like that <laughs> um that's that's basically the situation um more and difficult if you talk about finances again is of course the next year and will be the coming years you know that's yeah. what worries me much more than the situation now is in a way how are we going to start again when are we going to start of course that's not for us to decide but you know when finally we're in a situation that we are close to to a normal situation how can it start i mean how can you know will the audience come back right away how do we need to change the offer how do we need to change how we kind of engage with the audience and uh, how will the budgets develop I mean, that's also an issue in Luxembourg because, because they always look a bit more forward and they already said, you know, 21, 22, the government will not be able to afford in all fields uh, other than hospitals and, you know, healthcare uh, to give the budgets they used to give in the, in the past in a way. And so that's uh, the questions for us are more in the future than, than in the presence in a way. Because the presence you, you, you do, you know, you react on what is, what the possibilities are, you try to minimize your your deficit, your losses, and still offer as much music as you are allowed to do. I mean, that's how I, maybe I see it too pragmatic. <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks. So we'll come back later to the uncertainty in the, in the future. Maybe a comment on your on some management uh, changes you may have undertaken? Well, or... well management changes. I mean, uh, I think the most important is how to value your team and to value your musicians and that's that's for me kind of was the challenge especially in the first three months but also now in a way where where we are reducing again and and i think that's the moment to give them as much love and that's as much caring as as possible starting from you know town hall meetings for the full orchestra and town hall virtual meetings of course the town hall and for the team on a regular basis really staying in touch with the people and giving them you know making it also kind of explain the differences at least in our institutions we have some people who work absolutely not less than they normally do because the entire communication marketing department video production all of them they are they are very very busy and we are in fact looking who can who can help them whereas other departments like project management as you said uh, like uh, like full front of house team all of them they basically have nothing to do. And, uh, and so also to have, you know, why do some people need to work as they used to? You can also say why they are allowed to and why others, they are allowed to or have to stay at home. And everybody sees it in a different, in a different way. Some, some enjoy being at home, some, you know, some are desperate to come to the Philharmonie. So, so you know, be in touch with everybody find a good uh, a good way of uh, you know keeping them happy keeping them also in in contact with us especially in spring this was was quite uh, quite tricky i understand thank you thanks so much very very mm -hmm. very clear picture jerome uh, also you have started now as head of music but you were already member um of of Boza, if i'm if i'm right so how did Boza, that huge venue organization um, uh, resist to the to the tempest of of spring and summer and now fall 2020. Well, first, thank you very much for having me here. And as you say, it's my first uh, webinar in my in my present position. Um, yeah, you, you, the, the 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 word to resi resi resist is actually the the right one. Uh, we are in a kind of a resistance and. Um, uh, well, I, I, I can say that as uh, all of uh, the colleagues who uh, already uh, talked today, Bazaar has a um, huge opportunity to be a well-funded organization. So 
so far um, we, we, we could manage. Um, but it's true that the second wave that started for us on the 26th of, uh, of October, meaning the closing of all our venues, uh, is actually making the situation uh, every day uh, more uh, worrying. And um, even if we we are actually keeping the head out of the of the water, we see that the, the entire uh, economic model of uh, an, institu an, uh, an institution like Bozar is is threatened by the by the situation. I'm talking about the fact that we are we have this public subsidy, but we are also relying on mecenas, on sponsors, and on ticket sales. And um, in 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 the economical crisis that is actually. Uh, really showing his face uh, right now, we know that all these um, incomes are uh, not guaranteed. Uh, what I can uh, also say is that um, it's the same as, um, as uh, Stefan said about uh, 20, I think that 20, we will have a, a, a financial landing which will, which will be under control, but 21 is the big uh, question mark. And we know, we already know that we will have to, um, to reduce dra dramatically uh, the artistic uh, the artistic budget. So um, the digital has been actually um, a, a solution that raised uh, in the very beginning of the first wave. So we started to develop this, and it, it's some, somehow a good thing because Bazaar did not um, use, was not used to this kind of uh, diffusion of uh, its contents. So we did learn a lot. Uh, we did uh, professional professionalized ourselves. To, uh, on this um, on this aspect, and we could see actually that um, it brought uh, a new flexibility through the new formats that we could offer to the public, to to the new ways of uh, building programs, also shorter things, uh, sometimes more focused on a topic, uh, on a theme, uh, also more transversal because Bazaar, as you may know, is actually a concert hall, but it's also a big exhibition center and a transversal house of culture with dance, literature, cinema. Um, so uh, and conferences, lectures. So we had all this opportunity to to uh, to build what we call in in uh, in uh, in Bazaar uh, a digital Kunsthalle in the German words. So the idea of having this digital space in which we can offer uh, something which is uh, also a way for us to um, accomplish our mission of public service because Bazaar is not a private house. Bazaar is funded by the federal states uh, of Belgium and by the different governments of the country. So we have this mission to bring art and culture to the largest amount of, um, of people. Uh, one of the big uh, turns that we had to take also is to focus more on local artists. Uh, it's also a big change because uh, a big part of the DNA, the artistic and cultural DNA of Bozar in Belgium and in Brussels, but uh, in the entire country, is bringing the, the, um, the big names. So the international programmation of uh, all the concert halls that are actually on the same uh, type of program uh, as Bozar with a, a big venue of more than 2,000 people. So uh, focusing on local artists also brought new opportunities. And um, we, it's not about a kind of nationalism or, or looking to ourselves, but it's developing actually our um, artistic uh, tools towards the musicians of our country who need it. And uh, it's a kind of, um, of solidarity that we are very proud of, um, uh, that, that we are very proud of. So uh, yeah, it's not going to be easy. Uh, I think that the main, uh, purpose of the digital right now is not to lose the contact with the public, but uh, we also know that it's not a long-term solution and uh, we will never replace the fact of putting together artists and the public in a collective uh, experience uh, live. This is really our core business and we really hope that uh, even with a reduced budget in 21, we will be able to reopen our venues uh, as soon as possible. Thanks. Thanks so much for that uh, bri bri brilliant description. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Renaud, um, so um, thanks so much again for being with us. Um, you are an expert from the stage as well as from the studio side and recording side. So maybe first your testimony on, 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 the, on the recording aspects. 
Um, so you are artistic um, head of the, I think, most important label in in in, in Netherlands. Um, so how has the business been going in this last month? How was the feedback from the artists, um, from their managers, and how has there been any any change also in the organization? The way. Um, Pentaton and its partners have uh, have have developed in these last months. Yes, thank you, Eric. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me, and it's wonderful to uh, see old friends and colleagues again and uh, meet new ones this morning. Um, we're in a very specific situation, perhaps compared to the to the live uh, industry, in the sense that. At the beginning of the pandemic, we were very concerned, like most of us, that um, somehow the distribution systems would collapse, that if, a, any bits of physical market that remains in, in important territories, certainly in the Benelux, but also in Germany, in France, in Asia, that, that they would be, be under such pressure that uh, we would see a big, big impact in the in the midterm, short and midterm on our on our um, income. I have to say, six to eight months in, that hasn't really happened. Uh, and obviously, we've seen a big boom in on all the digital channels. Um, it, it's interesting. I mean, you know, internally we work. We are a small team working out of, of Bahn in the Netherlands, which is the, the old office of Philips Classics. With a couple of exceptions, most of us have not been in the office uh, since March, and and the company really uh, runs very very smoothly. So that's a very interesting, unexpected kind of uh, development on a purely managerial. Uh, operational uh, front. Obviously, we've had to cancel a lot of recordings, a lot of productions, postpone. We, we you know, we always say we're postponing rather than, than canceling outright. There again, I would say we had a very, very full summer, obviously, when things kind of picked up a little bit, uh, not only in, in the Netherlands, but uh, everywhere in Europe, and, and we could make the most um, of that time. So with maybe now one or two exceptions, we have basically caught up on our on our recording schedule uh, in, in the last few months. Uh, but but obviously at the same time, I would say the uh, I think some of the challenges that everyone has mentioned also apply to us. There's there's clearly a lack of perspective, even even in the very short term. We had someone, a singer, uh, uh, falling ill recently. Uh, so we had to postpone a project for the third time. Uh, but, but you know, nothing related to, to the pandemic. I mean, artists eventually will, will fall ill and they will not be able to, uh, to fulfill certain engagements. But then when you now try to look into 2021 and 22, how to, kind of put the pieces of the puzzle back together, how to schedule or reschedule. Um, the rhythm is so distorted, the general rhythm is so bizarre, so unusual that it, it, it is a big challenge, I think. It's, it's, um, it's difficult, you know. And, and again, like, like most of us, we're still in this kind of phase of, although we've been able to, to, to pick up a lot, we still have to kind of undo, redo, uh, adjust on the very, very short term, and then without any knowledge or, or certainty of what, what will be possible. On the more positive side, I would say it also has brought a lot of very short term opportunities. Obviously, artists, uh, orchestras, ensembles are, for most, um, they have time on their hands and, and, and they've been willing and able to record on. on very short notice, which is which is nice. Uh, uh, may, may, may I ask you two, two questions? Very short ones. First, do you have any any kind of figure? I mean, of the amount of record recordings which were planned twenty twenty, how many? Which percentage yeah. will you have in the end? Let's say we have year on year 
anywhere between 30 and 40 projects. Um, and then again, I would say, considering that we've been able to, to successfully postpone most of those that, that could not take place in the first half of the year, um, I think we're probably down by proportionally 15 or 20 percent, but not more than that. Not more than that. And you would say this is average also in the industry. So your uh, yes. competitors are doing the same. Yes. So the impact has been much, much less than yes. on the stage. Okay. And, and, and second question, did you notice any kind of change, even slight, in the uh, artist proposals? I mean, when you said there were some opportunities, did you notice people came to you and telling you, oh, you yeah. know, we won't do that cycle anymore? but we will uh, do something else. Not so much. I think the commitment to things That's that are already planned remains because, because recording is you know, still a very, very uh, unique kind of endeavor. Uh, and once we decide for something, generally it's important, valuable, interesting enough that, that you know, it should happen at some point anyway. But there's been lots of very, very unexpected uh, proposals repertoire-wise from... Um, artists, you know, who, who came up and said, you know, I, either either I've been studying or I've had time to actually really dive into uh, repertoire I, I always dreamt of studying, but I, I could never really find the time, or the opportunity didn't match the, the my my performing uh, diary, or um, or on the other hand, you know, I've I've actually been able to to re-study things I put aside decades ago and actually it's really it's really wonderful and and i really feel it has freshness and i would like to go into the studio and and, and uh, document this so so we have had some unexpected proposals in that sense um, and and it's and it's again i mean it's it's wonderful for what it is it doesn't change anything to the to the greater challenges that we that we uh, that we all face, but maybe that's a little bit of a beginning, small beginning of a silver lining in the in the process. I understand. Okay, great. So maybe now comes the point where we have to think not so much about the past, but more about the future. Twenty one is is starting soon, and if I understand you rightly, all of you, um, we have to address a kind of anxiety. Um, we won't lose now altogether the uncertainty problem regarding uh, vaccination and possible solutions for that prop for that COVID um, crisis. But what we can maybe all together start to draft is a kind of of kind of scenarios. So you probably worked on 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 this for your institution. So may I ask you? And the first, if you wants to 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 reply, please um, start with you. Um, what is the most probable scenario you are now considering for 21? And what is your strategy? And, and maybe the sub-question is, um, are we experiencing in real time a kind of, of basic change of our practice? Or is that just a crisis where most of the fundamentals of our of our practice and industry will will come back. So, what is your what what is your feeling on this? Which parameters are you working on, and and what is your roadmap in some way for your um, institution, um, for your artists, for your staff um, in in the next months, in the next year? Gunter, please. Yeah, well, <clears throat> um, after all of the turmoil that we have been through um, between March, February, March and today, we have decided for 21 to try to find stability for the organization one way or another. I mean, the, the constant shifting to close the organization, to play small concerts, to play full concerts with audience, to have to withdraw again to smaller um, concerts without audience, etc. Um, 
has brought a lot of nervosity both to the staff and to the musicians due to which we have decided now recently that um, basically and also uh, not to put any further pressure also on governments or scientists to say listen between now and june we have found a certain rhythm and we are going to continue that rhythm um, so basically streaming becomes the priority of our activities and will remain such until june until summer let's say if if um, one of the coming weeks and months which we hope uh, the halls will be reopening audiences are allowed to come we will we will actually welcome the audience as a spectator to a live recording so we, we turn it upside down and the most important thing for that is creating stability for both the organization and um, and um, um, and the musicians uh, because otherwise i mean the nervosity which was in the air um, all the time uh, has put a lot of extra pressure on on uh, on the organization and it's exactly that what we what we want to um, not to repeat in the coming months actually so we will not go along with um, um with 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 a sort of rat race as to having full houses as fast as possible we can do that because um, as jerome also said uh, we have a rather, rather stable financing thanks to the government fundings etc so so we can we can actually rely a little bit on um, or, or we, we 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 can pre-calculate the loss of ticket sales for a small while but of course they have to take up again and for the second half of the year for twenty second half of 21 we are actually now in the process of planning it should have been done already but of planning a normal between brackets season but the first issue that we are focusing on now is to create stability uh, down to but between between now and summer but that means in these eight months you are becoming more and more media in some way so you were a performing arts organization and you yes. are now moving into a kind of of yes so that means you are competing with um Disney Plus. Yes, and in that in that sense, I can. Okay, I'm. Uh, um, Hendrik is is part of this club that we are uh, organizing. The larger institutions in Flanders, you know, the structure of the country is a little bit complicated. We are not going to go into that, but we have seven large institutions in Flanders. We have the Opera in Antwerp, we have the Single in Antwerp, we have our colleagues and friends of Antwerp Symphony Orchestra, we have the concert, etc. Are now sitting together with government with the public broadcast and with the private um, carrier for uh, for um, television channels and we hope to um, to uh, to launch a television channel for the performing arts in Flanders in January so we are sitting together and trying instead of having all our own YouTube and 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 um, and uh, Facebook channels streaming channels to 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 actually coordinate all that action and to open a television channel, which maybe might be even a stare in the future. Is that a breaking news for us, or is that already? I'm not, I'm not reading the standard. So. It's breaking news. <laughs> is it? Okay, great. Thanks. We're proud of it. Hendrik, more words maybe on this. <laughs> well, yes, indeed, our story is a bit similar to what Günther said, uh, except that um, for us, um, autumn. Uh, will be crucial. We will not uh, do less, as um, Jérôme has already said uh, regarding Bossard, but on the contrary, we will do more. So we will reinforce um, our efforts to uh, present and stage and produce classical music and theatre and dance, because the single is a place for um, many disciplines. And the reason for that is that I think that it's now really crucial to also to reinforce this connection with the audience, um, because I'm a little bit afraid that we might lose some parts of, uh, of our audiences and it will take a lot of efforts and it will cost time and energy to build new um, uh, audiences. That's something we can discuss later because I think it's crucial when we discuss um, uh, trends for classical music. So, but in, in any case, we will, we will reinforce uh, our classical music uh, programmation starting from uh, the 1st of September. And until then, we will take it as it comes. I mean, it, 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 it's not, we, since we don't have any perspective for the moment, 
it's really impossible uh, to plan um, a nice and, and, and good looking and interesting uh, uh, spring programmation. So we will take it as it comes. We have to deal with a lot of cancellations. Um, our content is uh, reduced significantly any, anyway. Um, we will indeed um, invest uh, an important uh, part of our budget in streaming platforms. Um, the, the TV channel Gunter has already announced, but uh, since yesterday, the single has also its own uh, uh, channel, which is called the single on live, on which we will stream concerts, but also um, um, uh, program yeah, extra um, musical uh, things, um, interviews with artists, for example, we will even launch their, our own podcast series on uh, themes we, uh, f which are interesting for the single. So it will be a kind of virtual programmation platform. Uh, and we will see if that is, um, if that is successful, it might be a stair. Uh, if not, uh, we will go back to uh, our core business and that's indeed live uh, music and live theater and dance. Uh, uh, maybe to come back to what Stefan said about the um, kind of trade-off between marketing communications people and productions people, does it have a, a big impact on your um, uh, organizations, uh, Gunter or, or Hendrik? I mean, if you are now starting, at least in the next nine months, to be a, a, a real media force, like is, oh. you can, you can, are you, are you only doing that with external people? So, yeah. No, no, on the contrary, we, we, we use this moment and this opportunity to uh, gain um, uh, experience in-house. Um, for example, we have now a stream team. Um, it's, um, it's a team inside the house um, to work on this and, of course, in close collaboration with external people to gain experience and to gain um, uh, information we didn't have yet. But it's uh, exactly the ambition to use the moment to learn uh, to develop this uh, multimedia platform we have in mind. Uh, and that's, of course, um, yeah, a, a bonus uh, um, in this uh, situation. Yeah. We, we, we are in exactly the same position. It's, it's, uh, in all these dramatic situations, it's also kind of fun. Uh, we call ourselves the creative sector. Now it's time to prove it, that we are. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe do you and all the participants, um, that means also we have to introduce some people like uh, film directors, uh, lighting directors, costume designers, makeup people, etc. to our very special um, um, way of performing art. I mean, and very um, specialized people. So that means a complete... Uh, um, and I remember what Anika was saying, it's like of definitely making mini operas out of everything we are doing and, and adding a kind of dramaturgical touch, not only for real, but also an immersive dimension on, on screen. So that's, that's completely new skills. Um, um, I don't know if any one of, of you is also following that path in Luxembourg or Amsterdam. Yeah, Anika, please. Um. Yes, I think, I th but I think it is has been a, a sort of a trend that has already been set in motion before um, COVID. I think media and platforms and uh, disciplines are more and more merging, and they're more converting together. Um, so, and it also has to do with the way audience are now uh, uh, also changing. I mean, we get a whole generation that was brought up with gaming, with interaction, with you know a different way of experiencing audio or um, a concert than sitting in a stool in a in a theater or a concert hall so i think it's very interesting to look at you know visualization part of it we work uh, closely together with uh, north netherlands Sunil and club guy and roni and uh, for example we created in this time now uh, uh, um, in this collaboration, the Night Hotel, which is a virtual platform that has rooms with exhibitions, but also live inter of interviews from a studio uh, and, and premieres, because when in March the total lockdown uh, went down, we had three days after that, we had a big premiere of Before After, uh, which obviously couldn't go through with NNT and Club Guy and Roni and, um, and Slagwerk Den Haag. So what happened then is that sort of like an idea that, that was already there to have a digital 
theater platform space um then then got got like skyrocketed into the future so it was like in within three weeks it, it was it was built and there were already people in place that were already uh like specializing in that those kind of things and already were thinking about it so i think what the uh, the opportunity gives us this is is something that already was happening the change of the whole um, the way people experience um, theater or concert um, that that sort of gives us the opportunity to work on that and to see so what does it look like what does a concert look like in the future what do, what do people actually need what is how do we beat netflix for example why do people get off their chair and go somewhere um i think that is that is that's very interesting i think a lot has to do with the blending and the converting of disciplines and media so it's not only i don't don't think we're going back to um it, it's a bit what what Gunther and hendrix said it's it's and it's sort of like this, the streaming will not be over after there's a vaccine um or the way you know we started to use media or we started to think of digital platforms um it will it will be a combination it will be really interesting how um how you do that because we're learning new skills because it's different to be on screen doing a concert than being in a venue and now we're doing both an extra so, question mark to you so, Annika. Yeah. do you think the new young generation of composers because you are among uh, ourselves here probably the one being most in contact with composers uh, or following also that kind of of of, of trend are they aware about it are they wishing to to be at the oh, forefront like oh, you know stockhausen was 50 or... they, they they are completely uh into that i used to work uh, uh, uh i started the amsterdam fringe festival 15 years ago or something and already at the end of the fringe festival i got in contact with composers because they um, they were looking for uh, a platform that that allowed them to be different um, so they were suddenly there was an increase of composers in the Amsterdam fringe which is really interesting because they were more looking at uh, composition also as a way of how to visualize it how to make it into so almost music theater and then we started to work with Gaudi Amis which was for a lot of people sort of like Gaudi Amis music week and fringe festival was like a weird combination but for us it made perfect sense because those composers were looking in a completely non-traditional way um, at compositions at sound at the experience for the audience from uh, a composition point of view so i think they they have been they have been doing this for a while at least a, a certain part of um and we encounter a lot of uh, composers that that think theatrically or think visually as well. So I think it's, uh, yeah. Okay, Ginger, please. I, I would I would love to, to react and, and support on that. Uh, I think if we want to create the artwork of the future, we need to think, and COVID kind of urges us into that direction, we need to think of giving artists, create, creating artists, I mean, the infrastructure and the structures to create the artwork of the future. I have to admit, if I look to my own organization, and Hendrik knows that because we have been talking about that even in pre-COVID times, if I look to my own organization and I look to all orchestras in the world, we have to admit, we have to admit to a certain point how good the work is that we are doing, that we are actually 19th century structures. Um, and if we want to invite the composer of the future, the, the, the Stravinsky of the future, to do something completely new with an orchestra, we will have to break open that uh, that 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 block structure that we are in. So basically, I, I I'm, I'm looking very much to ensembles like Asko um, Asko Schönberg or, or here in Belgium Ictus Ensemble, uh, or, or of of how are they doing? They have the know-how and they are far ahead of of those bigger institutions as ourselves. On the other hand, we do have the, the personnel and, the, and, and even the financial um, support to do much bigger things. So, so, so to get closer to one another and to learn more um, about one another is for me um, 
a path to explore. We were exploring that, as I said, but COVID now helps us uh, to a certain point to, to break open the minds um, of, I mean, it's very funny, musicians are still brought up in conservatories. To conserve things is in their DNA. And we have to break that open, I think. I, I, could be honest. I mean, I, I, di I didn't react to uh, Jerome's talk about Digitale Kunsthalle, but I must say between the symphonic orchestra with his missions dedicated to, you know, perform that great repertoire we have inherited to a Digitale Kunsthalle, I, I, I know that there is a certain, certain distance. <laughs> Um, some some reactions, Renaud or uh, Jerome or Stefan, on what has been said above. Y yes, absolutely, and um, I, I I just wanted to uh, also to answer to the quite challenging remark of Hendrik about uh, the situation in uh, in Belgium. Actually, my point is was not to say that we would do less. The thing is that we will do. Um, with less money, and that is something that is, I think, absolutely obvious for everyone, and it's part of the um, of our day-to-day -day reality uh, nowadays, just to anticipate uh, this situation. So we are not going to do less; we are going to do differently and very differently. And I think that it is maybe uh, also, um, I mean, uh, answering to uh, the other uh, interventions, saying that um, it's learning us a lot of things. And we have actually uh, opportunities to uh, compensate this uh, lack of finances for 21 by uh, creating a new balance. And for us in, in Brussels, the new balance is, is, for example, relying on uh, the digital, uh, of course, but also on the transversal approaches that we can develop through our different uh, artistic uh, fields that are covered. The way we can work with communities, uh, with uh, the young public also, uh, the way we can create new relations to artists by co-creation, by residencies. And we have actually a lot of venues that are available for uh, artistic activities, even if uh, we don't have a, a public. We can also uh, reflect on a very important uh, point uh, these days, which are the cultural rights. How do we uh, position ourselves toward this question where you, where you see that actually the... the well, in general, the society, but in particular in the pandemic times, uh, the cultural rights are probably among uh, the things that are very far away from the political uh, um, uh, needs of, of the country right now. I mean, um, did you hear recently politicians talking about access to culture? about the way uh, uh, culture could play a role in, <laughs> in the development of the individuals and the collectivities. So we have to take this in hands because it is, I think, part of our responsibility and we have the, the time and the frame uh, to do this right now. So um, uh, I think that the digital is extremely expensive, uh, that it's also uh, a reason to create new partnerships and it's also uh, taking a lot of energy right now. We have to uh, actually go towards our sponsors and messengers with, with a totally renewed uh, positionment about, uh, about this. But it's also uh, creating actually new, comp new competencies in, in the houses. Uh, it's the opportunity for, uh, to, to bring formations to, uh, to, uh, to uh, operational technical colleagues that can actually develop something totally new in their, in their careers. And uh, it's all kind of things that we can use to stay diverse and inclusive during this period. But I can also uh, confirm that we are focusing on the fall. So starting from September until December, this is going to be, we hope, uh, a, a, a slow return to a more normal situation. And we think that uh, we will be at least able to use our main hall uh, in, uh, we hope, the max not the maximal capacity, but close to the maximal capacity, maybe by dividing the evenings in two parts, having a first part at, at five o'clock and the other part at seven o'clock, something like that. We have a lot of strategies. And if you want, I, we can go a bit later in the, in the methodology that we, we, we did plan uh, for 21. Contradict me if I'm wrong, but I have the feeling it's a little bit better to be head of music than um, chief financial officer at Boza next year. <laughs> and I have well, the feeling the mass will be quite complicated because you must have huge overhead costs in some way, yeah. because that's a spaceship. 
And uh, as you said, digital is very expensive. We all know that. And, and you don't have so much probably possibilities of, of ticketing, at least the first six months. No, and what you have to know is actually uh, all the digital costs right now are actually relying on the artistic departments. So we have to finance the digital overhead uh, on our artistic budget. So it, it makes the situation even more complicated because uh, we are yet re depending on the financial politics of Bozar in general, but we have to create uh, the incomes to cover the digital expenses. Stefan? Thanks, Joe. Well, let me let me first of all kind of contradict what you said. Uh, it's quite <laughs> it is for sure, but even risky to be CFO. Yes, anyway. <laughs> uh, I mean we all embrace Jerome because we know him, but but you know his predecessor had to learn that it's that's probably more risky to be head of music than uh, than being chief financial officer of the Boza. Um, uh, that's that's maybe. But I strongly believe in that we as orchestras as concert halls our it should always be you know our core activity is doing live concerts live for an audience in a hall and i think we should always kind of be aware that whatever we try to do or at least that's my opinion you know whatever we try to do in in in, in streaming in digital con well, digital content is maybe the wrong word, but you know, in, in streaming concerts or streaming music performances, let's put it that way, we will never be the best. Um, there are always, you know, companies, uh, may they be public, may they be private, who have more experience. I mean, the only advantage is that we are small, so we are more agile in a way, probably, than the big, than the big sh ships. Um, but otherwise, it's that's not what we are and what we are best at. We are best at, you know, bringing music on stage for an audience in a hall. And I, I strongly believe that there's a huge desire of people to come to a hall to, to you know, listen, concentrate. I mean, it's for me, it's it's the, the way you worship in the 21st century and also in the 20th century. So I would not give up, give up that too easily and say, now we're all digital institutions. We, we are not, at least I don't want to be that, you know. I, I want to, you know, provide an offer and you, I'm, I'm somebody who was at the, I, I really can say that. I mean, 15 years ago, I was at the forefront with my colleagues at the Berlin Philharmonic of preparing the digital concert hall of the Berlin Philharmonic. And we all had to learn over the years how difficult it is in a way to, to even for a worldwide brand like the Berlin Philharmonic to attract and, you know, make a business model out of uh, a streaming activity, especially if you are, you are just one institution. So you have only one product which is your orchestra or which is your program. Um, and so in a way, your initiative for bringing together the seven, seven institutions of Flanders or the seven main institutions is already quite a step in the, in the right direction. But, but I doubt, you know, this will survive for institutions like us. I think it will survive in the sense of um, for, that we will always from now on think what content we can also, you know, produce for an audience outside our hall, but I hope that you know that we will get good partners in that who make that you know a, understand a business model. Thanks. Thank oh, 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 oh no, maybe the, the label <laughs> they, they have already started, you know, having their streaming services in some way for a long time now. Yeah, no, I mean, as, 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 a, as a festival, uh, a business model, not only for the labels, but the business yeah. model. For people involved because at the moment it's kind of we are paying and they earn a little out of it <laughs> i mean as a, as a festival director I'm, I'm i'm i absolutely relate to what uh, what you guys are saying but i don't want to delve too much into that because uh, my festival is very far from the benelux uh, region um obviously we must never lose track of the essential what is the essential? It is to, to bring people together in the concert hall, basically, yeah, or in the theater, or you know. And this doesn't change, and it will not change, hopefully, in the future, because it's such a crucial part of, of our humanity, of our of our identity, of our being, of everything. Um, 
it's very interesting, Stefan, that you mentioned the Digital Council Hall, of course, because this was a, at the time certainly a very pioneering kind of endeavor uh, and, and still remains very unique in its own way or, or sui generis. You want to invest in, in building up your own brand, obviously, as an institution. You want to document certain artistic encounters that you think are relevant or representative of our of our time, that they also say something about us and they, they, they should be meaningful also as additions to the recorded catalog, which obviously is, is immense, yeah? And it's more than 125 years of, of, of recording now, classical recordings. Um, but this is where also the labels then come in and play, I think, a role, not only, I mean, a curatorial role to some extent, of course, but a role as, as a courant transmission, yeah? as, a, as, a, as a transmission channel in a way to 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 help indeed broadening the audience broadening the brand the appeal of the brand and so on and so forth but there and and this is a very very i think you and i have had this part of this discussion already at least but that's also what we're seeing now the pandemic is not necessarily it's disrupting many things it's accelerating trends that are already there honestly so it means going or, or strengthening even the importance of the digital channels on the one hand, but it means as far as I'm concerned anyway, or we at Pentaton, that if we want to remain focused on the essential and not uh, become a transvestite of, of ourselves, we have to look at this much more as a kind of cultural philanthropic uh, uh, enterprise than a purely commercial one, which is really a, a big shift of, of mindset for the recording industry and, and the artists. Um, I'm not sure we're going to solve this in 2021 though, so that, that's, not, that's not maybe the, 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 the main answer, but uh, anyway, because let's say more practically, 2021, we're looking at our planning. We haven't moved away from anything really at this point, but for sure, unavoidably, I already see this. We are also almost unconsciously, I would say, becoming more conservative in terms of what kind of risk we want to take. Or we assess the risk taking in a slightly different way, financial and otherwise. And at some point, I think this will have an impact also on, on, uh, on our recording planning. Okay, so maybe it's, it's um, I don't want to summarize the latest interventions of all of you, but I, I think or I can at least identify two big challenges. Um, the first one relating to audiences. We had formerly, of course, not just before COVID, but let's say the world we were addressing last January was much easier than the one we will address next January. I mean, regarding audiences, we now know we have to, to have a contact, a strong contact, an intimate contact with a lot of very diverse audiences. And, and we are not, I don't know how we want to have the right people, um, the right mindsets to address so many different um, people and in so many different ways. Um, so then maybe, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just wondering how we can in such a short time change so many things so that uh, at the same time we are addressing our usual audiences on stage sooner or later, but we also have now to market and promote our contents on the web where rules are completely different, as you said, uh, Renaud, and probably things will also merge. There will be something of a philanthropic um, streaming market emerging much probably because the externalities are so big. I can't imagine when our national state budgets will be flourishing again in five to ten years' time that there won't be kind of public funded services also now on, on screen. So the first, first thing is, um, do you see this like I, I do now that we are now finally addressing everyone being inclusive as Jerome said um, but that is a huge challenge. And the second challenge I think, coming back also to something uh, uh, Jero mentioned, is what will become of our international market? I mean, we had one of the most integrated markets with Chinese pianists, 
living in the States, having flats in Paris, and talking in German. And um, will there be such animals again in 10 years' time if now we have to come back to some um, Luxembourg-based artists? I very appreciate Luxembourg-based artists, I must say, but, but we all know what I'm talking about. So, um, so this, is, this is probably the main challenge because at the same time, we, are, we have to reconnect with our former audiences. And one of you told very rightly probably, how do they come back? Will they come back? What will happen, etc. And we know they were stuck in not having the best of the best. And that's pretty legitimate. On the same hand, we need to show more solidarity. We need to be more inclusive. We need to give the chance also to the local based artists. And from a business model point of view, it's the only way also to solve the CFO of Bozer's equation and math. So. Um, I see also that challenge, and very much because, as you know, we are now there because of the Centre National de la Musique and their fantastic bio export team, and they are mandated to get um, French artists outside and to receive, of course, in the best French institutions, the best, the cream of the cream of the international artists. And we all want, deepest in our heart, that these kind of of communication channels keep safe in the future. So, how can we? also solve that kind of 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 of, of trade-off so this will be the, the my last two questions very vast sorry and and quite diverse but i think they are in some way articulated please the boldest of you can start Enric is <clears throat> well i think um that the uh, connection with the international world will come back as soon as the vaccination um is done so it's a matter of time and I think uh, it's our responsibility to uh, reconnect with the international world also as soon as possible. Um, I totally agree with Jerome, I think, who, um, who said that we have to pay attention to solidarity, but that's not new. That was the case already before the pandemic. Uh, but solidarity doesn't mean that we only have to focus on, on local artists. We also have to be solidar with the international world and and um, find uh, and to find a good uh, balance um, between our uh, focus on local people and international people and for a place as the single this is really crucial so <clears throat> from september onwards we would ju we go back to business we invite again as many international people as possible because it's so important to invite those people um, to uh, enter of course we always will do that in um, in, in full solidarity with people from here, with local artists, with local orchestras, with local uh, audiences. That's that's very crucial. Um, but what I think we what we don't have discussed yet is when we uh, speak about um, focus on or new focuses on audiences. I think we also have to reinvent the way we present classical music. Um, um, maybe that, that we could discuss that also among each other. Um, why don't we take this time to, to thoroughly reinvent concert practice? Um, and I will launch um, together with uh, the local conservatory here in Antwerp, a new research and development, uh, development platform to, to work on that subject because it's crucial. And I also know that my, my dear colleague from Brussels, Gunther, is also uh, very interested in this topic and that also the Brussels Philharmonic will play an important role in that. Uh, field work, but we have to reinvent the way we connect with uh, audiences. That's one thing. And the second thing, when we discuss diversity, um, I think we always discuss diversity in audiences, but I, I think it should all already start with diversity on the stage. Uh, and I think that the classical music world is not diverse yet, unfortunately, uh, and that we need to enhance uh, our efforts to make um, orchestras, ensemble, baroque ensembles, um, recording companies, uh, companies much more um, uh, diverse in who they present and what they present on stage repertoire-wise. Um, I think that's for me also very important um, now to discuss because it's the right time. We have plenty of time, we have nothing to do. The only thing we have to do now is to make sure that we uh, incorporate, the, in, incorporate this ambitions in our future work. Right. Gunther, maybe? Oh, Annika, uh, please. Mm. 
Yes, I, 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 I agree with also the diversity. That's a, a big challenge. Also, if you just look around, not only what is on stage, but also if we just look at ourselves and our organizations themselves, um, who, is this, who is discussing this diversity within <laughs> the organizations? That's also a big step. Um, what I think is, is really interesting, because I, uh, I was reflecting still on, on the thing that Stefan and, and Renaud said about um, getting back to you know, being uh, uh, live on stage. And what actually the big question is that we are asking ourselves constantly is what is live? What is it? How do people experience life? Because if you only look at the way concept changed over the last uh, decades, it's, if, if you would go to a concert in the 80s, you would see the artist. If you go to a concert now, for example, a big concert, you see images and very far away, there's somebody live. Um, so the, the whole perception of what live is, is changing. And it is, uh, a, and it is if it is, is about connection, how do people connect? How do you get them to connect again? How do new audience connect with certain things? And I think that it's really important to think about also with the whole development of, of our artificial intelligence, machine learning, about how composers are composing now, which is completely different. Um, but because of technology, uh, and I think in the cultural sector, we think too little on these developments. Uh, we, we, we really need to build new ecosystems and look over uh, to other people and what they are doing and you know, look at, at new ways of connecting to audiences. I, I completely am very intrigued by the uh, uh, research and development uh, uh, department that Hendrik is starting. So I think that, that, is, that is crucial also to connect with audiences. And also I think the word audience needs revision. Um, I think it's more about people and it's more about um, uh, the, the role which was men mentioned before, what role does culture, I think it was Jerome, um, uh, does culture play in now in also the new political system? How do we grab this opportunity to actually have a voice? Because we had no voice for a long time, in my opinion. Um, so I think that that would, um, that would be something to reinvent um, the way uh, music is seen as something much more broader as something that is part of culture, part of a way of living that has values that go beyond, you know, what are you putting on stage? And um, on the inclusion part, I think it's really, really crucial. Um, I, I didn't come from the classical world and uh, uh, stepping into it, it was, I took uh, at a certain point, for example, very short, um, my producers to a concert and I just explained to them how many rules you have to know before you can enjoy a concert when to stand up, when to clap. Why is the conductor walking on a stage and only gives one person a hand? That's rude. If you don't know the rules, that's really weird. But if you're in it, it's like so normal, but take, to try and take somebody to a concert, enjoy it while they don't know the rules. And I think that's so crucial to think about these little things. Um, that, that we take for granted. Uh, a concert doesn't, doesn't start when first notes are played. It starts at the entrance. It starts buying a ticket. It's the whole, I think we need to think of concert in, in terms of experiences and then move forward. So a new, new, a new purpose, more or less, for what we are doing. So yeah, re re redefining. It's not, yeah. not so much about culture in the narrow sense and much more about you know, uh, and living and cultural rights, uh, as, as Jerome was saying, in the much broader sense. Yeah. Gunther, maybe a word on this, because we know you were working hard with within an orchestra, which is probably, you know, one of the most, uh, how can I say that, um, difficult to move around and, and sheep among the ones we have here. Gunther, do you want to, to say a word on? on... Well, I, I think um, Anneke is so right. Um, it's about, I mean, really deeply thinking of connecting with audiences. I once had a, a huge discussion with a, with a famous architect here in Belgium who built one of um, the latest concert halls. And I said, listen, 
it's a great concert hall, but the odds to connect um, between an audience member and a musician, the odds are the highest in the parking lot. Because if you are lucky, you might park your car next to the car of a musician who would have been there earlier because he still have a rehearsal to do. But if you come out of the parking lot, the musician goes through the artist entrance and you go to, if you're lucky, to the VIP lounge. And then you are separated in the audience, in, in I mean, in, in the hall, because the, the, the musicians are on stage. And the best way, the, the, the most, the, 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 I mean, the, the, you, you might be lucky, you might be lucky to meet the artist at the Lotoma, the parking, the, 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 the paying machine for the parking, if the musician doesn't have a parking ticket to drive out uh, immediately. So basically the whole thing of connecting and reconnecting is indeed something that we should think about and that we should consider. We, I think we all know that, and we have been aware that certain issues in, in certain uh, ways of dealing in our, in our industry are not sustainable forever. And I think that we need to address those things with all respect for the past and with all respect for what we have done in the past. But in order to indeed, as, as it has been said here before, in order to preserve that which is so precious and necessary to preserve, that is that contact with the patrimonium, with, with the, the symphonies that has been created in the past, which is part of, of our Western culture, in order to keep that um, showing and connecting with an audience, we will have to think like the audience of, the, of tomorrow. And, and I'm afraid that, that all things, I mean, I, I'm looking at my two, my two grown-up kids, they are 24 and 27, um, virtual reality, um, um, artistic intelligence, we are, we are nowhere in that world while they are living that world. And it's something that we really need to reflect on while having the utmost respect for the music and the arts that we that we that we love so much and that we think it's not because i love uh, Mahler symphonies i think it because it's necessary for humanity to preserve those pieces of art as i think it's necessary to preserve notre dame in paris it's the same thing but how are we going to do that how are we going to connect with people and i think that that is a real challenge which is even made bigger now with 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 COVID indeed Any, any anyone else on the car park meetings? Yes, I, I, if I may, I I, um, uh, I totally agree with all all what you said, uh, Hendrik, uh, Anneke, and Günther. Um, uh, Anneke, you were talking about people has to uh, learn when to clap. Uh, they also have to learn when to cough. And uh, uh, a very very funny thing with COVID uh, COVID nineteen is that uh, people start not to cough anymore in the concerts, and so we have very silent uh, periods between two movements of uh, of a symphony. Um, I think that um, the question you 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 began with Eric uh, asking uh, did the digital or does the digital uh, really change uh, things about the way we touch uh, we reach uh, the people? I think so far. Uh, it doesn't, and uh, it doesn't. Why? Because uh, we are um, not talking uh, to everyone until we do know what uh, are the cultural needs of uh, these people. So it's really about reaching out. It's from us to them, and it's not a kind of extension of our usual marketing um, habits. And so um, talking about this, um, should I think remember us that uh, digital is a media, but it's also a content. And if we do not uh, transform uh, dramatically the content uh, to accompany this new uh, media, uh, well, we, we won't actually create that diversity that we, we want to have. And uh, when I think, when I see uh, all the efforts that are made, uh, to try to, to create uh, uh, strategies around this. I think it's really uh, um, something that should be professionalized, that should not be left to um, general appreciation of uh, people with good intentions, but rather to be uh, uh, theor 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 theorize. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to say that in English, uh, to transform in a concept they have only practice in English, you know, they have no theory. Yeah, 
theory. That's for Germans and French <laughs> and Belgians. So, for example, in Boza, we, we have actually very recently um, contracted an inclusion officer who is working at the quite high level in the, um, in, in the, the organigram. Uh, we are working uh, on, well, the programs, artistic programs, but also the public, uh, the partners, uh, the places we are going, uh, and also the people inside all these levels that we call that the five Ps. Uh, should be actually uh, included in the, the building of a, a diverse uh, artistic policy. What, what do you mean with five Ps? You know, you mean well, well, or... it's about program. So okay. What are the, the sorry the, for the... being naive on this? I don't know, but uh, it's uh, it's it maybe it's a, a kind of um, internal um, denomination. But uh, we talk about being diverse in the programs, being diverse uh, towards the public being diverse with our partners, being diverse towards the places we go, because Bozar is not only the historical building that is going actually in this reaching out policy in different places in Brussels, and being diverse in the people, so also in our own teams. And uh, working on these different levels may help step by step in a house like Bozar uh, to get to a more diverse image for the public. Sounds great. We, we, we will keep these five Ps in mind. Wonderful. Stefan, anything similar to five Ps at Philharmonie Luxembourg in 21? Um, you have to unmute, Stefan. This is, this is, we are, we are in real time. Well, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, well, diversity is not only has not, will not only be a topic in 21. It has been a topic for many years in Luxembourg. But we it's a, we have a different point of view on diversity here because all of us here we are foreigners. We come from you know from China, from India, from Austria, like me, from from. Uh, so that's not an issue. And uh, and also uh, gender wise, I I think you know. Lux, if you look at old Luxembourg, that's a problem. But if you look at the many new companies that are here, uh, we, I think, we are quite far. Let's put it that way in that discussion. We are not very far, and that's that's maybe the issue. Also, if you look to countries like Sweden, if you look to to mainly the Scandinavian countries, repertoire-wise, for what we do. I mean, uh, maybe in one of your next uh, webinars, you will have you will have Stefan Forsberg from the Concertus in, in in Stockholm when we when he told me five years ago that from in two years time he would have fifty percent female composers in his programs. Um, I said I said Are you kidding? And uh, by now we know it works in a way, and so it's kind of a discussion also what challenges do we want to give ourselves what do we want to aim for and and that's also for me a topic for coordination in between in between the halls and also of course uh, between ensembles and and halls um there we are far behind for example here and that's for me a personal challenge to see also with 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 politicians here um what do we want there? What do we want which goes beyond the normal request of politicians to say, well, you have to play Luxembourgish music, Luxembourgish composers. And then I keep saying, yeah, but, you know, Luxembourg is, I mean, the population of Luxembourg is like, you know, one, 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 I always compare it to Berlin, that's less than Friedrichshain Kreuzberg. So how many composers do I find even in Berlin in Friedrichshain Kreuzberg? Um, there might be one or two who, who have you know can be played on an international level, but otherwise we have to we have to be very very careful on what we. That's, that's quite quite a lot in Friedrichshain Kreuzberg. Yeah. But if you take mm -hmm. composers um, under forty in Dahlem and Zellendorf, so you you, you want to yeah. Have them. Maybe, they live some in Friedrichshain Kreuzberg, but just to to say that so say so there will be for me also there will be lots of diversity uh, challenges. Um, yeah, I think that's that's all I want to say. And maybe no, one thing, because you are one of the uh, in the top league in Europe of the international uh, import waren. <laughs> uh, so we, we you keep that in your policy in the, in the coming year. Well, though. I think I think the what we are you know what we are living through at the moment. It just it will not change completely. Change the game. It will accelerate 
some of the developments we have seen before. And probably, I mean, to my, as I think, I mean, there will always be, you know, international artists traveling all over the world, having, you know, having a reputation all over the world. What we will kind of see probably is a reduction of international or let's put it intercontinental touring. But that had, in my view, already started before the crisis also, you know, through the, through kind of the ecological questions that many of us start to ask themselves in a way does it make sense to fly to fly your orchestra to south america and for what amount of concerts does it make sense and how long should they stay if to make it you know to make it really i mean besides all the money questions or all the budget questions and i think that will you know the crisis will accelerate that discussion in a way why, why do we why do all orchestras want to play in china and how often need to, do they need to play in china um that's that will change certainly yeah but otherwise we'll go back to you know we'll we'll definitely want to present still uh the best of the world i understand but i can resist a uh, temptation to ask renault but that time not as a pentaton artistic director but at the head of la Nodière in canada yeah. close to montreal um about that last item so you are of course inviting of also the creme de la creme of the international top soloists and conductors so uh, what have you done this year? What has, will become of, of La Nodière in? Yeah, I in think you have you have three minutes, dear Reno. I'm, I'm sorry, this it is a hot topic and rightly so. But as Annika says, it's also integrated in a broader uh, uh, experience uh, discussion and how we how we adjust. And this is of course going to be. Uh, also important over the next months and years. But so for us, I mean, we had to cancel the summer season in 2020, which was a big loss. Uh, it was really ordered by the government, so we could not find any uh, escape from it. We had a very short season in September uh, with Canadian artists, very high profile Canadian artists, which was really fantastic. It was kind of improvised because everybody was sitting at home mostly and, and were very happy to come and play. We could uh, have up to 250 people in the audience at that time. Then literally the day after our last concert, everything closed again, which was both extremely irritating and, and, and a relief that we didn't have to, to, to deal with this in the middle of our season. But, but the fact remains, and, and I think we have to be clear about this, uh, that the Canadian system itself, let's say over time, will not, it's not going to be sustainable to work only with Canadian artists. Let's, let's be very clear about this. I mean, it's not because there's, there's not enough- The second breaking news of today. <laughs> no, 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 this is true. And of course, you know, I mean, here I have to take one step back, but let's say for all the challenges we experience now, I would still say the situation is better in Europe than in North America. And I don't want to sound patronizing for one minute when I say this, but, but the truth is over there, we're not looking at the same reality. Nobody can actually come in, come into Canada. Uh, and even then, you know, everybody has to go, uh, uh, Canadian citizens also, they have to, 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 to stay in quarantine for two weeks, unavoidably, independently from the reason why they come in. Uh, you know, th th this will have a big, big impact for the festival next year if, if there's not a very significant improvement in, 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 that, in that regard. Um, and so, please, everybody's welcome. <laughs> great, great. So, I think this will be our very... Um final words. Um, I hope that you may tell us, uh, Gunther and Hendrik, the, uh, this new TV channel you have just announced. Thank you so much for this, for your trust. Will be also broadcast throughout Europe. Will it be possible to follow it in the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and in neighboring countries, do you think? We, we, we are working well, please, please tell us that we would love having, having this. Um, the sun is shining in a very small town uh, in the north of France, which is probably the southern border of, of the Flemish countries, where the Duché of Burgundy was still quite active in the 15th century. Uh, so, um, Francoise, it's up to you. Thank you again for all our listeners, to all of you. It was absolutely a privilege to be with you today morning. Thanks again.
Thank you very much to all of you for this uh, fascinating news and discussions. And thank you to you, Eric, for, for your contribution. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that uh, our next webinar will uh, be focused on Spain and Italy, and it will take place on the same channels uh, on the 4th of December at 11.30. So please stay connected and stay with us and take good care of yourself. Thank you to all our panelists for, for your participation and all the very best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Francoise. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.